Hi, welcome to Freezer Meals 101. I'm Sharla. And I'm Christy. And today we are talking about our childhood favorites that we have converted into freezer meals. Pretty much. I mean, I've been eating my whole life. <laughs> and, so. you know, like, it, the childhood favorites are kind of become what your comfort food is. It is true. And growing up, like when we kind of went through this exercise to decide on the meals, um, growing up, my, I've said before, my mom is a fantastic cook. My mom is a fantastic baker. My dad never cooked at home. It was a really traditional, you know, pink hat, blue hat sort of house. And she learned to cook from her grandma who was a camp cook at a logging camp. And so she went to work with her grandma and learned how to cook huge amounts of food for a lot of people. And she was so fantastic at it. And a pie. Now, if we did this on baking from our childhood, oh, it would, it would yeah. no problem. I would be able to throw stuff at you all day. But I grew up on a beef farm where, and we had chickens. My parents had an egg farm for a long time. So we had beef and we had chicken and we had pork, but it was salt and pepper. Sometimes we get a little crazy with some Montreal steak spice <laughs> and we ate potatoes and then we ate our garden vegetables. So coming to do freezer meals with you and learning, like there's so many different meals. Now I'm a good cook, but you have a great brain, these ideas, and you're always interested in finding new things to make. My repertoire before doing freezer meals was pfft, I will sit there and look online at menus from restaurants and try to figure out like what I would like to order there, therefore what I would like to eat, and how I could figure out how to create right. that recipe. Yeah. Right. And that's that's why we love you. Because <laughs> yeah, and that isn't the way my brain operates at all. I am a path of least resistance. It will get in my stomach, it will feed me, I will be happy and move on with my life. Now, I don't like bad food, but I'm also, I, I don't mind eating plain food. Right. And that doesn't bother me at all, and I'm not terribly squeamish. But a lot of your mom's traditional recipes from childhood wouldn't really translate into freezer cooking. Not really, no. And so, you know, you'll see the ones that I, that I talk about here, yet they are our freezer meal. You know, they're, yeah. they're a little bit different, but yeah, there was, like we just we just had a freezer full of beef and and anytime we did chickens there was you know a freezer full of chickens and so we would cook, we would cook the whole chicken right to this whole business of having boneless skinless chicken breasts like my are we high and mighty like <laughs> yes and they're expensive and so we and so even if we had to buy chicken right. we would buy a whole chicken or we would buy it with the skin on and the the bone in and if mom had to change that, she would skin it, she would take the bone out herself. And then, right. would there be a sauce with it? No. Mm -hmm. Yet, she, yeah, it was, it was very different from how I cook now. So I had an easier time, even though I, okay, I have to preface this. I love my mom so much. She is one of the most amazing humans. She really is. That I've, even heard of like she's just a very selfless kind human being and she's incredibly talented she's an artist and she's creative and she's a hard worker like oh my goodness and she's strong and I want to be her when I grow up like she's 73 70 well no she, she was 72 almost 73 and climbing mountains still but my mom was not when we were growing up the best cook i hate saying that i just like it's like it hurts my heart to say that because she's so good at so many other things but cooking wasn't one of them and i think fear was one of the things that kept her from really being a good cook and bringing her creativity into the kitchen um but yeah she wasn't totally a great cook but some of the things that we did have are more things that translate into freezer meals yeah. So that this part was like this is an easy exercise for me. Yes, and it was yeah, it was a little difficult for me because I really, you know, unless there's meat and potatoes that you can freeze, she made a really good potato soup. 
I guess. I don't like potato soup, so I never <laughs> eat it. So right. she would make a big batch and freeze it. Yeah. But we don't have a potato soup in our no, in our don't. repertoire. Because you don't like it. Because I don't I like don't it. I'm not going to eat it. I don't like it either. So, you know. We do have a great garlic mashed potatoes recipe. Yes, we do. So, you know. So the first recipe from my childhood, this is not the exact recipe my mom used, but it is a childhood memory of mine was having sloppy joes, you know? Yes. And I always thought the name was fun and it's just kind of one of those things. It went around our neighborhood. We lived in the most amazing neighborhood. It was like this just warm, friendly, kind women who were mm -hmm. such good moms and they all kind of looked out for all the kids in the neighborhood. It was just, just an idyllic kind of thing. That is so nice. And so in that neighborhood, it would be like somebody would find a recipe like Sloppy Joe's. Sure. Who knows where they found it because there was no internet. So maybe in a magazine or they would share a doctor's each other. office and they would. Mm -hmm. I have a chocolate cake from the Western producer in 1968. Okay. And that is the chocolate cake. If you're going to eat it at my house, that is the cake that I make. Right. And so somebody in the neighborhood found this, mm -hmm. right, in somewhere in a mag, I think, I, I imagine that it was like at the doctor's office, in the magazine, in the waiting room, and they, well, they can't take a picture of it. No. They don't have their, their camera in, on the phone, on their right? Phone. But whatever, in some way they transcribed it or... Or, and, but man, like, I don't know about your mom, but my mom had a load of cookbooks. I'm not yes. giving my mom enough credit. I She was a fantastic cook, but when I'm thinking about the stuff we ate day to day, it was... Right. And, and she would, she had the entire set of Better Homes and Gardens. Oh, very nice. And they're beautiful and my cookbooks. my mom did have some And like cookbooks. Pioneer Woman and... Yeah. Yeah. Like, and like the church cookbooks. That yeah, they would sell and as the fundraisers. Best of Bridge. Best like of my, Bridge. My aunts had the Best of Bridge cookbooks. And some of these recipes that my mom used might have come from my aunt. And, and okay, so one of our neighbors was actually our doctor. Oh. And so when I would get croup at, you know, three in the morning, couldn't breathe or whatever, like, he was there. It was, Aww. it was just, he, I love Dr. Brown. <laughs> I kind of... Yeah, he's, um, and he was my doctor up until he retired, and and I still know Dr. Brown because they were friends. Like, they, you know, it was in our neighborhood growing up. So, okay, I'm way off here, but Sloppy Joe's, one of the moms in that neighborhood probably found this recipe in Dr. Brown's waiting room in a magazine, and... <laughs> then came home and made it and then shared the recipe with all the other moms because that's the, the neighborhood that it was. So our sloppy joes that we use here on Freezer Meals 101, we, in our large freezer bag, we add some ground beef that's browned, onion, garlic, some green pepper that is chopped. Now in my childhood one, I don't remember there being green pepper, but here you can add a little bit of get those vegetables, vegetables in. in for your kids. Salt, pepper, dry mustard powder, chili sauce, tomato sauce, ketchup, which my childhood one definitely had, brown sugar, Worcestershire sauce, and lemon juice. You're gonna give that a good squish to mix it all together. You're gonna take out the extra air from the bag, get as much air as you can out so you don't get freezer burn. Then you're gonna seal the bag. On the day that you go to make this, you're just gonna take it out of the freezer, thaw it, and serve it on buns. So you're gonna heat it up in the skillet or the slow cooker. It is so easy, but it's one of those like, takes you back to your childhood, right? Which is funny because I swear to you, I had never had a sloppy joe until I went to college probably because at the time if you made sloppy joes you made it out of a can of manwich and added a pound mm. of hamburger okay and if it was processed like that my mom just she wouldn't have thought to make it right and like, my mom did make actual sloppy joes like this like she, oh and if my mom had known maybe about a yeah a recipe like this if she, she might have if she lived in our neighborhood if she lived in your neighborhood she definitely would have been on the sloppy joe train but it wasn't it was we did uh but we ate a lot of ground beef but mm -hmm. and i've told you this before and you kind of think it's weird but a lot of times 
we would just fry up the ground beef and leave it fairly chunky and sometimes put a little bit of onion in it and some salt and pepper and that was it. Like you had the ground beef and potatoes and a side and we would put ketchup on it and that is, we ate that and, and my husband also grew up on a mixed farm with beef. Actually his was a dairy. It was okay. later when he was older that it was a beef farm yep. and they ate like that too and so if I ever just have a pound of ground beef and I just <laughs> will fry it up just for the two of us and we will demolish it as if it's bacon. Wow. That's... Yeah. Because that's homey. That is yeah. homey. So this is very frou-frou. <laughs> yeah. For... Sloppy Joe's is extremely <laughs> frou-frou. Sloppy Joe's is so frou-frou. Yeah. And I mean, it's the same thing. It's, that's dressed up. Yes. Yeah. We would just have a little bit of onion, a little bit of ketchup. <laughs> Isn't that funny? One thing that my mom did make often, because we had the ground beef, was meatloaf. Now, the recipe that we have in our club isn't that recipe, and I haven't had it for years. But I have it at home because we had a school cookbook that we did as a fundraiser, and everybody could put in a few recipes, and then it would say... The, the students oh, yeah, the and, and the like the parent who put it in and then the students who were in the school at the time. Yeah. And I was from a tiny little school, like there was about 130 kids from kindergarten to grade nine. Well, and, that is small. Yes. Like there were 17 of us in our class. My husband graduated in a class of 11. Wow. Tiny little schools, That's right? Tiny. So we're these tiny, small <laughs> Alberta towns. My husband's graduating class was 18, so... Yeah, isn't that funny? This was huge compared to yours. Huge. <laughs> my high school was like 90 because we had feeder schools. Right. To go to the big high school. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there was 90. Um, ish. I think we had 300. Right? So, no, that's, yeah, maybe. 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 Yeah, okay. So, mom put in meatloaf into the school recipe okay. book. Um, I still make... Uh, Thronus's pancakes and Beliski's waffles and Cute. Mrs. Atkins meatballs that has Aww. a can of tomato soup and they're not in the club or anything it would be weird to freeze like it would yeah. be a tough one the other thing my mom put in was um, shipwreck okay. like good old shipwreck with the rice and the the layer of beef and then the tomato sauce and then you bake it all at once and the rice is supposed to supposed to cook but it never yeah. seemed to it always seemed a little bit crunchy but agreed so those things so our meatloaf recipe was in the cookbook that i still have and i still open it up regularly to well i have the pancake member memorized now yeah but yes so some good stuff in there so but this recipe is a really nice one because it's got the barbecue sauce right with it and then when you bake it, you put the sauce right on and it just, mm, it is really a nice, nice meatloaf. So you start it with your ground beef that's raw, obviously. You're going to add in breadcrumbs and graham wafer crumbs. You're going to add in evaporated milk, some onion that's been minced, some eggs, salt and pepper, some onion soup mix. We use the uh, onion soup mix that's from Bulk Barn because we can get it MSG free. But if you have the packets, three tablespoons is equal to one packet. And then we're gonna mix all that together and put it into a large resealable freezer bag and get all of the air out and then you can seal it up. And then we're going to, in a bowl, make the barbecue sauce. So we start it with some ketchup, we add some brown sugar, some mustard powder, and some chili sauce. And we're gonna mix that together and put it in a medium size, like quart size freezer bag and then we're gonna staple those two together. Make sure you staple above the seal, otherwise it will have leaks. And I mean like a leaky bag, not the onion. <laughs> right. <laughs> One of the things that I have talked about in videos before from my childhood is chicken hurry. And my kids grew up eating it. I grew up eating it. My mom, as far as I know, got it from, I think a company's coming cookbook, mm. which we had a lot of companies coming books over the years. Yeah, and yeah. if you were a kid that grew up in Alberta, Canada, chances are you may have had a Jean Perret Companies Coming cookbook 
on your shelf. On your shelf. Absolutely. Everybody had them. She was local yes. and and they were good. They were just really good. And just solid good recipes. I have some. I got some for my wedding. <laughs> like it, she's been around forever. She did pass away just in recently. the last year. Yeah. But uh but she oh, she's she had a catering company in I think Vermilion, Alberta. Mm. And became very famous because her recipes were so darn good and they're just good they're just good food now i learned how from her if you have a frozen roast it's called emergency pot roast okay if you have a frozen roast and you have supper coming company coming that night company's coming yes. and you need to get it cooking you can put it in your slow cooker and pour boiling water over it to really give it a kickstart and then do go about your day because you're going to still give it that seven or eight hours on low and it will be cooked in time for your family Ooh. but that's how you do it to keep it out of that dangerous temperature zone mm -hmm. is by doing it with the hot with hot water and interesting in that same slow cooker cookbook i am if i had never made it but i swear i have seen it she has a chocolate cake recipe to yes. make in her slow cooker yes she does yes, she does she does because I I have that book. <laughs> so this came from, as far as I know, a company's coming book. There is really nothing healthy about this meal. Let's preface that. And it also includes ketchup, which the Sloppy Joes did. Yeah. And there was and a so lot of meatballs. ketchup. Yeah. Oh. Like my growing up years just involved ketchup. We went through it so fast. It didn't even go in the fridge. Our ketchup stayed in our pantry. So Whoa. did our mayonnaise. That's, oh, that's gross. No, no. We went through it so fast. It was shelf stable and it, we just ran out of room in the fridge. When you mm -hmm. have milk cows, right. that gets the priority. And so okay. something had to go. Mm -hmm. And so, and as long as you didn't get butter in it or anything to, to contaminate the mayo, right. it's, it really did stay as long as we needed it. And mom was making lunches for three kids a day plus my dad. Yeah. We went through a jar of mayo in two weeks. It was okay. totally shelf stable. I'm not recommending you do this. No. But I will also say it took me a long time to get used to cold ketchup. Oh, that makes sense. It, if yours was always out. Mine was always in yeah. the pantry. Well, it was it was in the Lazy Susan. It was in the corner cupboard. Yeah. And it was it did I went to college and my roommates were like I put ketchup in the fridge and I'm like I phone my mom Can we put ketchup in the fridge because wow I just something had to go I had no room <laughs> and so I learned how to like cold ketchup and our ketchup was in our fridge but in this recipe sorry it was no we're why do you we're telling stories sorry. today <laughs> this is this is gonna be a storytelling day because this you know, is a storytelling day childhood. In your large freezer bag, because I have freezer mealized this chicken hurry recipe, and again, we've been making it as a freezer meal for like oh, over a decade. and I had never heard of it before I met you, and you're like, chicken hurry. Like, like what do you mean? Chicken hurry. I had the cookbooks too, but we weren't having chicken hurry at my house. <laughs> no, but you can attest. It's, it's good. It's good. And you can Google it. There's a thousand different rest websites that have some form of chicken hurry that's really similar to this. There's not a lot of variation. No. no. So in your large freezer bag, you're going to put your chicken thighs or chicken breasts and then some ketchup, water, brown sugar, and dry onion soup mix. That's it. It's like five ingredient, just done. And then you have your slow, well not slow cooker, but you have your chicken hurry. So you can cook this in the oven, the skillet, or the slow cooker. We grew up always, always having it in the oven. Mm -hmm. That was the only that was the only method that my mom knew how to cook this. That's probably you know? what it said in the cookbook. Probably what it said in the cookbook. So that's always how we had it. And we always had it with rice or maybe potatoes, but mm, probably more rice. And then you could spoon the sauce. Yeah, it makes over a lot of sauce. Rice. And it's good. Like or it's sweet potatoes. and tangy. It's yeah. all the things. Again, not the healthiest brown sugar and ketchup. <laughs> but if you want your kids to eat chicken, this is pretty much a guarantee. It is a guarantee. And <laughs> I I make mine in the skillet. It's just a preference for me. It cooks down a little bit, it caramelizes a little bit. And um, that's how I like to make mine. Uh, this next recipe is actually Charlotte's Tante Giselle's chicken fried rice, 
but growing up, chicken fried rice is something that we would often make, and it was one of the few things that my dad knew how to make. Oh, okay. When I was 13, my mom went back to work, and she was a realtor, and she kicked butt at it for like 25 years, but she wasn't always home for meal time. And so my dad, and my brothers were long gone, so it was just me and my dad at home, and he had to step up, because I, I mean, I was 13, I probably could have cobbled something together, but he took on that role. And let me tell you, if it was in our kitchen, it, it could go in the fried rice. And you've <laughs> laughed at me before, because I'll suggest things. We could put this in fried rice, and you say, no, you can't. <laughs> well, because... This recipe is always also from my childhood, yes. and it was my Tante Giselle, my, my dad's sister, and she, like, this was every holiday, like, every Christmas, every it's what Easter, she every, well, and it was usually at her house. And we've talked about this dishes. before, that a lot of times Chinese food is a big thing at Christmas, yeah. for a, maybe not always Christmas dinner, but like Christmas Eve or Boxing Day or New Year's Day. We would get together and have a huge Chinese dinner where everybody would bring a homemade Chinese item, Chinese food item. Yes. And, and the, so it's not unusual to have no, chicken and, fried rice at Christmas. But hers is this one. I mean, Christy will read it to you. I'll read it to you. She has, like, Christy has suggested to me, like, well, baby corn. And, like, that makes total sense. Like, it, uh, we, we put baby corn in a lot like of our stir fries. fries. It totally makes sense. But it can't do it. Because it's just wrong because it's my Tante Giselle's chicken fried rice and it has exactly these ingredients. And even though for so much of my cooking, I'm like a throw it in and let's let's tweak the recipe and let's play yeah. around and let's be creative. There's just something about this. The, the funniest time <laughs> was we were doing a mega session at the end. If you haven't watched them, a lot of times we have just kind of stuff left over, like oh, there's extra onion, there's extra carrots, there's extra chicken, we have like, we have some rice. So we were going to make that and your mom was here, bless her heart, she was here helping us do dishes to keep on top again, of our- Again, my mom is awesome. She is a, so <laughs> awesome. And and it's her sister. Well, no, it's my dad's sister. It's your dad's sister, Never mind. And. We were talking and I suggested to Charlotte, well, we have that can of baby coins. We could throw those in. And she's like, no, we never do. And her mom said, yes, she did. I had her, her fried rice with baby corn in it. And you guys phoned her and asked her because you were not going to do it. Yes. And it didn't happen. No. I don't remember what she even said. Because I think Tom she said no. fried rice has water chestnuts, peas, carrots, onion, celery, which I'm allergic to, so it doesn't in my house, but you Ooh. know, <laughs> and chicken, like it, and it has the certain sauce, and it has, like, yeah. it, is, it is this thing. But any other fried rice, like if, if you wanted to do like a pork fried rice or something. I right? made pork fried rice yesterday. Totally. I finally had those honey sesame uh, pork chops. Oh, and how were they? Very good. Club worthy. Awesome. I think I think we can like move forward with that. Okay. And excellent. we had some leftover, chopped them up nice and fine, made pork fried rice. And so that I, I would put be water chestnuts in it because of you, because yeah. of this recipe. I, I could do baby corn in that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my dad, I, one more thing, my dad, because he was trying his best for a man who didn't really cook. Um, when I say whatever was in the fridge could go in it, one time it was hot dogs. And my mom was like, oh, I don't know what he was thinking. I'm like, I ate it. I was hungry. I didn't care. It was, he made it for me. And it was. You probably thought it was like extra good with the hot dogs. I mean, I, kids it didn't and hot bother dogs. me. No. Well, I was probably 13 or 14. But yeah, it, he made it with hot dogs one time. And just, we had hot dog fried rice. And during it, we ate it. Tan Giselle's chicken fried rice. The Charlotte method. Tom Giselle's method. Uh, we started with our cooked rice. We're going to add in your chicken breast that's been cooked and diced or leftover chicken, right? Like you, this is, that's what's nice about a fried rice is lots of things can go in it, but not this one. <laughs> and we're gonna add in the celery, if you can have that. We're gonna add in diced onion, diced carrots, and water chestnuts that have been sliced. And sometimes we chop those up a little bit extra too, or we leave them big. Um, we add in some frozen peas, some minced garlic, some oyster sauce, which is surprising. It was a surprising ingredient to me. 
and I think people might who don't like seafood might shy away knowing that there's oyster sauce in it but it doesn't taste fishy it doesn't it just is another layer of flavor there's there's nothing wrong with adding it in my opinion no and unless you have an allergy to shellfish totally my mother-in-law who um hates seafood and has avoided it her whole life has eaten this many times never knowing that it had oyster sauce in it because she doesn't have an allergy and yeah. she really loves this dish but she doesn't realize because you can't taste it you can't taste it but it just adds a little zip mm, a yeah. little zip, zip in it and then the last of course soy sauce you have to have soy sauce if you're gonna have chicken fried rice so really you're just gonna mix these all together and add it into your freezer bag or you can mix it right into the bag. On the day that you want to cook it, you just thaw it and fry it up. You can do this in the oven too, mm -hmm. which I have seen done before. I almost always do it in the skillet, but you can do it in the oven as well. Yeah, and mine, I either do it in a wok or a skillet, or like the only time I do it in an oven is if I'm doing it for a potluck or for like a large For a large gathering. goop and you have like a mound of it, yeah. right? Yeah, if I double this recipe or take out two bags from the freezer yeah. because I'm having- Like do a roaster full or something. Yeah. yeah. So another recipe that makes me think of my childhood, and sadly I have not been able to convert my kids other than one, to loving this but is tuna casserole it's such a comfort mm. food thing and i do remember eating this in childhood and the recipe was very similar um the one that we or that my mom made didn't have red pepper in it but it definitely had the frozen peas of to course. me that like has to be in there i have heard of corn being in tuna casserole to me that I, it doesn't appeal to me just again because my mom's had the peas and that was like, that's kind of the way it should be. <laughs> Did you ever have crumbled up soda crackers or crumbled up potato chips on it? No, but I have neighbors that did and so I was over there and have had it that yeah. way. I've made it with or without, but I like to have that a little extra crunch. Yeah, Yeah. right? And so this tuna casserole really reminds me of my childhood and so it gives that like comfort food thing but there is only one of my kids that will eat it so when i make this i make it in a large bowl and then i transfer it into the medium size quart size freezer bags because then it's just enough for my daughter and i to have it's not the family size because then everybody else will complain about having to eat oh. tuna casserole which is like so gross apparently but i think it's good i love it and um i will get to it later i'll tell you why we probably didn't have it a whole lot but my whole family will eat it and yeah. I, my son doesn't super love the peas he'll pick around them because he likes the rest of it so much yeah. i'm just glad they'll eat tuna totally it's and it's pretty inexpensive at times. Yes, you can is. sometimes get it at case lot sales, and so yeah, we right. do that. Um, so into a large bowl, you're gonna mix together some cans of tuna, two cans of tuna that are drained, some chopped onion, some cheddar cheese that's grated, two cans of mushroom soup, some frozen peas, some chopped red pepper, and a little bit of pepper. Now, if your kids for sure won't eat the red pepper, then obviously just omit that. If they won't eat the peas, oh, they're green and they stand out and they could pick them out, or you can omit them. Like, yeah, you know, use your judgment. Mix everything together really well in that large bowl, and then you're going to put this in a, a, either a large resealable freezer bag or some small ones. Now, I didn't talk about the egg noodles, which you can do this where you cook your egg noodles ahead. You're gonna a little bit undercook them because when you're doing pasta for freezer cooking, it will continue to cook on the day that you go to serve this and, and bake it. And so you don't want it to get mushy. Therefore, you're just gonna undercook it a little bit before it goes in the freezer. I have done this where I've only made the sauce part of it. And then on the day of, I've cooked the pasta up fresh and mixed it in or in this case we are doing it all together so we've cooked our pasta up we've added that pasta in there and everything is like all stirred together and it is right ready to eat so on the day you go to cook this you just thaw it and you can 
bake it in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes. So it's ready really fast. It's one of those like, if you have a soccer game to get to, yes. if you have piano lessons that night, like it would, if you're running kids out the door. You can get it done. Yeah. And they will be fed, not just eating. You and know, goldfish crackers in the totally. back seat. Yeah. <laughs> or here's a granola bar, throwing granola <laughs> bars in the back seat. <laughs> Let's see if I can reach that third row in yeah, the van. In the van. <laughs> um, but this is one where it's like, that's a whole meal. Yeah, it is. And you could probably maybe add a salad to it to increase your vegetable content. But you know it's what? It's got peas, red pepper, onion. You're, you're good. You're covered. <laughs> you're covered. You're totally right. Uh, so this next one reminded me a little bit of uh, my mom's cooking, not because she made a lot of meatballs, this is honey garlic meatballs, but because we would often have like um, spare ribs and they would be like sweet and sour spare ribs mm -hmm. where they're in the slow cooker all day or actually, let me think about this. I seldom saw my mom cook with a slow cooker. Hmm. She would slow cook things in the oven open it stir and like at a low temperature and she would just do it in the oven like okay that's it was just another appliance mm -hmm. that you had to store that took energy that you, there was no need to have a slow cooker she would just do it in the oven and that was that was fine um that's how she learned how to make chili too was in the oven and so this is honey garlic meatballs it's a little bit of a departure from sweet and sour <laughs> spare ribs but it's the Asian flavors, it's the influence, it's still beef related. Um, and if mom was feeling like doing a sauce, sometimes, she would make like pineapple chicken where she'd open mm. up a jar of VH pineapple sauce and yeah. pour it on the chicken and we would have that on rice. And that was wild. That right. was, you know, like, <laughs> oh, mom's getting the sauce out. Like that was un unusual because that wasn't her typical Typical type of cooking. Right. But listen to these. These are fantastic. We're going to start out. You can use homemade meatballs or in our case, we often use the frozen ones because we're kind of trying to save some time here and leave, meatballs are uh, labor intensive. So you start out with your meatballs. You're going to add olive oil, soy sauce, quite a bit of honey, and a lot of garlic. You're gonna add a little bit, of, little bit of water in there and mix it all around in your bag. You wanna get all that air out and you wanna seal it up and then freeze it. When you go to cook this, you are probably best off to just throw it right in your slow cooker for three to four hours on low. And you could serve this on rice and that's kind of it. Maybe I would consider serving this with egg noodles, but mm -hmm. mostly I would just use rice, I think. I chose this next one because I was thinking like this is probably a recipe that a lot of people have from their childhood. I This is spaghetti sauce. I liked spaghetti growing up but I didn't love spaghetti because spaghetti was one of the recipes that my mom would try to sneak vegetables in and her choice of vegetable was frozen peas. So. Oh. I did not think that those things married very well. And I like frozen peas, but I just did not like them in spaghetti. And when my husband and I got married, it was one of those things where he was like, why does your mom put peas in the spaghetti? Like, you know? And, and so um, I learned to enjoy spaghetti when I was older, like teenager years. And I would just take like a jar of prego and and in the skillet I would cook up like some onions and garlic and fresh basil and throw the prego in and add like a little bit of Italian seasoning and kind of make it my own. But it's basically just like a very simple marinara. Yes. And then I would serve that over spaghetti noodles, which you know are great, <laughs> great. And then some parmesan and the red pepper flakes and and all oh, of that. That goes way back. Eh? Oh, that's way back i've been doing that forever i also add the red pepper flakes into the tuna casserole but you know that's an acquired taste i would be yeah i would be okay with that Little so things there. right but so spaghetti sauce like yes i have memories of it from my childhood they're not overly positive memory but i did come to learn to love spaghetti right and then i experimented a lot with that prego thing that I started and kind of over the years that 
morphed and changed and I learned how to make a really, really good spaghetti sauce. So I'm going to share with you our freezer meal version of spaghetti sauce. It is really worth making. Um, I usually make mine with a veggie beef because I don't so much eat beef. I'm, well, I have not eaten beef in 20 years. <laughs> so so I, if I eat it, it is either meatless or it has the veggie beef, um, which I brown because I prefer the, the texture, the of, texture it. Mm -hmm. of it when it's been browned. So you've got your ground beef or veggie beef in your bag and it's been browned either way. And then you're gonna add some chopped onion, some chopped green pepper, garlic, tomato sauce, tomato paste, diced tomatoes, water, a bay leaf, parsley, a little bit of honey, just to take away some of the acidity from the tomatoes, oregano, basil, salt, thyme, and a dash of pepper. So it's got lots of really good flavor in there. You're gonna mix it all around to combine it, get the air out of the bag, seal it, freeze it on the day you go to cook this. You're going to, of course, cook up some spaghetti noodles, heat this up, in the skillet or you could do it in the slow cooker but i usually do mine just in the skillet and then you're going to serve it over your spaghetti with some parmesan and red pepper flakes <laughs> <laughs> of course of course well while charlotte was growing up eating peas with her <laughs> spaghetti sauce um and she we've talked about this before and she thinks it's so weird so weird as weird as peas. As weird as peas. Mm -hmm. But our at our house, it wasn't spaghetti sauce. I'm not saying that we never had like, you know, a can of ragu in the Lazy Susan. But my mom had a really excellent chili. Really, really excellent chili recipe. And that's where, she, and she did slow cook it in the oven sometimes. And, but we also had an electric skillet, which was like, we would oh, make yeah. popcorn in it. Oh, that's cool. It was cool. We made popcorn in our electric skillet in the 80s before we got our air popper. Again, an appliance. Why would you buy an appliance when you don't need the appliance? Right. Um, a very practical, humble people I come from. <laughs> yes. And so at our house, if we had chili, we would serve it on spaghetti. Now, before you get all out of sorts in the comments, there's a place now this is recent because we talked about this in a video fairly recently and somebody said oh they must have got it from and i want to say it was like in cincinnati or there's yeah. a city where it's really popular and i've to heard that before chili to have spaghetti. chili on your spaghetti yeah um and it's not terrible and we would just have that sometimes we would have garlic bread with it or or a salad but we would have our chili on spaghetti my dad hated pasta he didn't like the texture of it. And I mean, like we grew up on the farm, we also had 120 hills of potatoes every summer. Right. So we had potatoes year round. We had a cold room where we could store them. The preference was always potatoes. And my husband is the same way. So I make a lot of potatoes at home, much more than Charlotte does. And I love pasta. And you love pasta. And I, and right now my husband is kind of like, oh, I'm sick of pasta. And I, I that's fine. But because we're potato people. Um, and but, when I planned our more recent freezer meal session that we just did last month, I kept that in mind. And so I was like, your husband will be very happy to because, see that yeah, it's not very much pasta. Because sometimes it is pasta heavy. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I have no, you know, protein with a the marinade. They're all gone because I've used them with the potatoes. Yes. And those are the last things you use. They are it's because so funny. I don't love making side dishes. We've sometimes started making side dishes that we can freeze and then I right. don't have to worry as much because I have the mashed potatoes in there. I've got the cream corn. I've got the carrots in their sauce and you know, yeah, and yeah. I can just pull them out. And, but normally like, because that requires me to have to think about like going to the store, getting, and I don't love, I don't love that. I'm not, I, contrary to what it might seem, I, I'm not an extrovert. And so I don't love going to the store. I don't like, I'm not, I'm not 
in, you're not a hermit. No, 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 no. I, I go She's out. She's very personable. I, and I can I, take her to a party. And, yes, and, I like. I talk to. We're people. gonna have a book club, and you're gonna come, and you're gonna see people and talk to them. It'll be great. You know, I occasionally will like venture outside of my home compound. Because <laughs> Christy's my neighbor, so really she's the same. I as am her my social home. circle. Right? This is my social circle. That's not even true. She probably has a million friends. She knows a million people. But I don't love going out, and so I would prefer not to go to the store, and especially not have to have to like plan and then figure out right. what I'm going to make. And then plans change a lot in our house because we have a very busy house and lots of things that tend to happen. And so then I've planned things, I bought the thing, and then those good intentions, aka side dishes I was gonna make, yeah. go moldy in my crisper sure. in the fridge. Right. Uh, so and I when you that. start to rely so much on freezer meals, it is tough to think of those things. If you're yeah. meal planning every week and you are planning out your sides, you're much more likely to actually make them. I've started buying salad kits. Mm -hmm. So that we can have them a little bit more often and have a have a more it's natural. Easy. Like, it's an easy side; they're already there. Um, and I'm very extroverted, yet <laughs> yes. I still hate going grocery shopping. <laughs> well, and I think we don't have to go very much. Like that, that sounds very privileged, but it's true. With freezer cooking, we make enough meals to last for three months. Sure. So uh, when we go, it's a big shop, and yeah. now with the advent. One of the good things that came out of COVID is grocery delivery. And so we can, you know, order online and they go pick it up. You don't even have to go into the store. They'll come and put it in my trunk for me. Although so, I have not had good you luck. You haven't had good luck. I have had exceptional luck with it. So. Yeah. And every time I go, I'm like, I'm missing a bag or something. And we live in the country. So for me yeah. to have to go back in to get it, it's like, that's not a small thing. thing. And so, no. or like, they're like, there's just a few things we didn't have in stock and they read like half my order. <laughs> so then I'm like, if I had been in the store, I would have been able to go, okay, that goes with that. So if I can't get that, I'm not gonna get yeah. that and whatever. And so I have, I don't do it I, anymore. I was doing I it. I have really good luck with it and I <laughs> feel bad for you. <laughs> yeah, cause it's kind of funny. So my dad didn't like pasta. He wouldn't, I ne we would seldom have lasagna. My mom never made it because Dad didn't like it. And so I learned as an adult how to make lasagna. That is in the club. It's called Cece's Lasagna. It's really good. And one of the other pasta dishes that she would commonly make, and this is going to gross you right out, but I promise you it was good. She would make macaroni and boil it to death. Death, Sharla. Like they're okay. limp and they're wilted and they've collapsed. That's okay. how mushy they are. And she would drain it. And then she would add a can of whole tomatoes, plum tomatoes in, and salt and pepper, and that was a side. And that is such comfort food to me. I haven't had it in years, and now I kind of want to go home and make that. Have my mushy macaroni. And I'm probably exaggerating about the mushy, especially if mom's watching this or somebody. It, <laughs> but it was, that, that's what it was. And it wasn't until I went was out on my own when I realized that there was a number on the back of the box that said right. this is how long you cook pasta for. Is it al dente? <laughs> yeah, al dente. And I don't like al dente pasta. Right. I always give it another minute or two. Because you grew up with... Because I liked it really soft. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but I am kind of a slave to the timer when it comes to right. pasta and stuff. And so, I mean, it's a weird one, but it was... That is it was what we had. had, and it was a way that dad would eat it. And that's true. So that's what we had. Um, and I'm going to tell you about one more dish that has nothing to do with this. I'll get to the chili, I promise. Um, she would chop up like two onions and saute them and then add tomatoes. Okay. And we would put that on the meatloaf. But that doesn't sound bad to me. No. Like that, that I, I'm with that you. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that I'm with you on the mushy macaroni with no. the tomatoes, but so for macaroni, mm -hmm. the, I, when, when I married my husband, uh, which was a really long time ago, I knew how to cook two things other than the prego, which I don't really consider cooking, like on, you know, a jarred pasta sauce on top of spaghetti. Um, I knew how to cook this appetizer which is called veggie pizza and it's like you 
put the Pillsbury crescent rolls oh, out. Oh, pan for chef. And then, yes, yeah. it's a pan for chef recipe. And like the cream cheese. And then on ours, and you mix it with dry ranch dressing um, and I think some mayo. And in on ours, we do a layer of lemon pepper because that's how oh. my Auntie Judy did this, you know, layer of lemon pepper. And then you do all these. Now I want to eat chopped. that. Oh, it's so good. It is so I make good. it every you need to Christmas Eve. Yes. You I, need to have a party. I haven't had a party she in a long time. She has the best parties, and she always makes that. And so I, then I cut up, like, zucchini and yellow pepper and purple and, you know, like, and you put the vegetables all on top. And so veggie pizza was one thing I knew how to make, which is really random, but I knew how to make that because I loved it. And I knew how to make this thing called Mum's Monday Macaroni. And now that you're talking about that, I'm like, I want to make that like tomorrow. I can't make it tonight because my husband's going to be out tonight. And and I have to make it when he's home because he would... He loves it. He loves it. Because it was the other thing you knew how to make. It, and ah! it was like, it's, com it's going to be comfort food for him because it's so reminiscent mm. of like those early years when we had like, we didn't have TV. We didn't have... We couldn't afford like long distance phone calls and we lived away from family and like we'd, we we would entertain ourselves by playing backgammon which is like the only board game we owned. We didn't even oh, own a deck funny. of cards. We had no furniture. My uncle gave us a futon, like a used futon for our wedding and that was the only furniture that and, and my mom's friend gave us this table. It's round and it had three legged chairs. Oh, so interesting. Four three-legged chairs that all fit sure. under the table completely so that, you know, it didn't For take up a spaces. lot of room. Yes. Yes. And the, it has since broken, like, it, years ago, all the <laughs> legs broke off the because it was very used when we got it. But anyway, in that place in on Vancouver Island where we lived, we had Mum's Monday Macaroni because I could make it. And the thing about it is, is that it's my a recipe from my aunt or my grandma. I don't totally know because my mom's not sure. So that's, it's you know, right? Around. It's just called Mom's Monday Macaroni. And so the cool thing about this recipe, and it's not like, it's it's not a culinary like experience. It's not that awesome. But again, comfort food. But the cool thing is, is that you put the macaroni in raw and it oh. cooks in the oven. Oh, kind of like um, like a hamburger helper sort of idea, except it's not in a skillet. Yeah, it's like oh. in in your it's like a one in pot. your casserole it was dish. The original it's one the pot. The original one pot. No wonder I like one pot recipes so, so much. And so it's like got your can of diced tomatoes. It's mm. got I always used marble cheese because marble cheese is what we had. So I grated mm. marble cheese in there, and it's got a little bit of seasonings and some water and your macaroni and like it's kind of a mac and cheese meets like tomato-y, I don't know, whatever. It's it's not that exciting, but it was what I knew how to cook. And it's like total so comfort nice. food for me. So I did grow up having that too. I don't know if I could freezer mealize that because the noodles cook up and- You could just attach them separate. You could, but really it's so simple to throw together yeah. that- anyway. Why would you, yeah. Although you do chop an onion. Well. So, you can freezer that. So you can. Um, at our house, just when you said that, it went down the little rabbit trail yes. of um, Taco Tuesday, which oh, yeah, we yeah. would have tacos, and they were good. They were just simple yeah. tacos. But we had the best homemade pizza, and Mom's pizza dough recipe is in the school cookbook. Oh, it's awesome. And it even says, and my friend Amanda that I went to school with makes yep. this all the time and she laughs about it every time because at our house we I don't they were um I don't know what they were from but they're like a huge pair of scissors like giant shears <laughs> okay that were in our the scissor drawer we had right. a drawer that we called the scissor drawer <laughs> okay and because there was other things in there but it was mostly that's where we just kept this giant pair of scissors and when we would make the pizza after it had set Mom would take the giant scissors, she'd wash them yeah. and make cut these. And she even wrote that in the recipe of like, it's a great idea if you have a big pair of scissors to just cut your pizza with the scissors. And my friend Amanda has a giggle about it every time. <laughs> oh Janice and those giant scissors. <laughs> you know, gotta, gotta cut the pizza. And um yeah, gosh. Fun. <laughs> and we had a giant cheese grater. 
that had a crank on it and it was avocado green and it had a suction thing on the table. So for making lots of pizza, yeah. we'd put the mozzarella in and crank it and it would spit out a little funnel onto into a bowl. <laughs> and you knew it was a big event when you were getting out the, the cheese grater. The cheese grater. I wonder what happened to that thing. Oh, maybe you're gonna find out. I might find out. I'm <laughs> gonna go help my mom do some moving around in her house here in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Back to the chili <laughs> that I would be happy to put on spaghetti, just so you know. Okay, we started with our ground beef. We're gonna add our onion, coarsely chopped, garlic that's been minced. We like to use the jar of garlic because we make a lot of freezing meals and we do not like to stand there forever mincing garlic. Um, we are gonna add in kidney beans. We're gonna add in some chili style beans with the liquid, diced tomatoes, tomato paste, chili powder, of course, cumin, paprika, and a little bit of pepper. And then Charlotte's secret ingredient is a little bit of maple syrup. Um, if you don't have maple syrup, you could use even just a little bit of sugar because kind of like in the, is it the spaghetti sauce? Yeah. That, you know, the, the acidity of the tomatoes can be a bit much. It just cuts the acidity a bit. Or you could use honey. You could use honey and that would be okay too. Um, on the day that you're going to cook this, you can do it in your stove top. You want it, you do kind of want it low, right? You want it low and mm -hmm. slow with, with a bit of stirring. You don't want to bust up your beans or anything, but with a bit of stirring and you want those flavors to meld. Otherwise you can do it in your slow cooker or like my mom, you could do it. It's not on our recipe card, but you could do it in the oven, low and slow, a couple of hours and uh, let all those flavors meld and all that excess moisture just will bake off and you have a nice thick, chili and you can serve it with buns or on spaghetti noodles <laughs> yeah you can do you remember the tim hortons commercials from the 90s where the guy he's like we're, first i got the chili and then it, first i ate the chili and then i ate the bowl because you could get chili or really thick chicken soup chicken stew in a bowl and they would they had the like a big like a round bread bowl. a big bread bowl and they cut the top off fill it with chili and you would take that and that was that was a commercial for the longest time. First I had the chili and then I had the bowl. No, I don't really know. And, and he was so excited about it, he made <laughs> mouth <laughs> with his arm, you know, to put that in. We would love to hear what your childhood recipes are. Like, what, what do you think of when you think about your childhood in terms of food? And have you found ways to adapt those into freezer meals or just into your regular rotation like, and and if they're them? weirder the weirder the better a little bit like i want to hear about your hot dog fried rice and i want to hear about your your kind of weird things like the chili on your spaghetti or the peas in your spaghetti or the peas sauce in your spaghetti sauce you know um moms everywhere are typically just doing the best that they know how yes and so we think and we back. know that we know that we cut our moms some slack for some of the weird things hopefully our kids will cut us some slack Yes. Um, you know, they, I think that they're probably pretty lucky that they have all this wide variety of freezer meals that we make for them. Yeah. Um, but they will have ones that they're like, oh, do you remember when mom tried to make us eat this? Yeah, that'll definitely come up. And that's what they are going to talk about in their YouTube videos <laughs> when they're older. Because we're darn good cooks and they're going to bring up our fails. Yes, I'm sure are. that's of what course. they're going to remember. But boy, I... That was a nice little walk down memory lane. It was. And I, I need to give a shout out to the Alderwood Crescent ladies from my childhood. Aww. Those women, I feel like they helped raise me. And my mom was a great mom and she was all hands on and everything. So it's not like, you know, she didn't raise me. But like they were like aunties for me growing up. Like you sure. have been to my kids, right? Right. And it's just like I have so many memories like they did this we call it the great Care Bear rescue where one of my, my brother's Care Bear fell oh. down like the chimney hole yeah, at the back totally. yeah. and they these women all came together because he was heartbroken he was maybe four and he was you know falling and so they came together and they devised different plans and one of them was in there with a flashlight in the house and then two of them were on the outside because there was like this trap door into behind oh. in the chimney. And they they eventually got him with like a fishing 
uh, like a fishing line and a hook and everything but the one in the house is like yeah I can see it okay over to the left and, but that was like their fourth attempt I don't remember all of the that's so cute. different ideas they had that they tried to get this like and we when he came up he was soot covered and then, <laughs> but they salvaged they saved the Care Bear Oh, that was just and the nicest story. They had like Halloween parties for us where you would put your hands like in, you, you were in oh, the in dark. Oh, in the spaghetti and, with the yes, grapes. Yes. We would do that. Like all the things. And they made, my mom stayed up late at night like decorating the pumpkin cookies for that party. And they did carnival. My friend's and, mom had a Halloween party where we were in the basement and she gave us a menu. And we had to order dragon's blood or brains or all these different things and the dragon's blood was like punch right and the brains were the, the spaghetti and those yeah. kinds of things we didn't and i had never done this before i had That's never so heard fun. of this and i'm like bat wings what am i getting <laughs> i didn't know and here it was like pita bread or something like yeah. I, you know i just and some of them weren't always related to the meal but i thought they just made it so much fun. It was so fun. No, we've done fun things for our kids. We totally Don't get have. Me wrong. And I do those kind of like the carnival. We had Pinterest in the moms and before there was Pinterest. Totally. We've often said that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. My my mom was like that for my childhood. You should post pictures of the Olympics we had here. Oh yeah, we had a backyard Olympics. For that the was kids. really good. It was, it was fun. We've oh, had lots of little. We had a rainbow party. You had a Dr. Seuss party. We did. Yeah, we really good. just moved here and I met her and she had this Dr. Seuss party and it was just because it was Dr. Seuss's birthday because I used to homeschool and I would do weird things like that. It was so fun. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We will let get back, let you get back to your regular programming. <laughs> we are gonna shut off our video and we're gonna just sit and have a coffee and reminisce some more. Absolutely. I think. Yeah. I think we have to because we're kind of on a roll here. Yeah. Thank you for joining us down this trip through memory lane. Yes. And kind of like how we got here, really. It is a little bit, isn't Culinarily. It? <laughs> Culinarily. <laughs> ah, be careful with that one. Um, please join us again another time. We're going to put a video right there of some just family friendly or kid friendly. Let's do kid friendly. Kid friendly. We're going to do kid friendly freezer meals so that you can hopefully... When your kids are adults, they will have less stories to tell <laughs> about your cooking and more just positive memories. <laughs> That's right. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy cooking. Bye.